Um, you know, th these lessons on commas are important, not just because we're learning where to put them, but it's also helping us understand those parts of a sentence. So, you know, helping with, uh, you know, introductory phrases, introductory words, uh, independent clauses, things in a series, you know. So uh, that's why there's a lot on this, not just to understand the punctuation side of it, but also help you know, sort of reinforce the different um, parts of a sentence. So um, more than happy to, you know, have some extra lessons here dealing with, you know, punctuation. Uh, and of course, next week we'll work, well, not next week, our starting tomorrow uh, in our next unit, we'll start dealing with like certain types of spellings uh, and, and common spelling errors and things like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at unneeded commas. Hey there, it's Dwayne. I'm going to teach the lesson on unneeded commas. See, one common mistake that writers make is adding too many commas. This lesson will help you avoid extra commas that can make your writing difficult to read. Yeah, and sometimes, uh, you know, as young writers, I mentioned this too, I, I had a, a issue at one point of, of overusing commas. Uh, and that's the thing. It, it, when you are looking for them, uh, it will be kind of difficult to read. It, it, there'll be a hiccup in that sentence that doesn't belong. And that's one way you're going to wind up spotting an unnecessary comma a lot of time. I used to add lots of extra commas to my writing. I guess whenever I felt like pausing or whenever I was thinking about what to write next, I'd add a comma. Kind of like saying, uh, or, um, when you're talking. I remember one day I was writing an essay for a contest. It was in this magazine with all these weird and supernatural stories. And I had a great idea to write an essay about why zombie movies and stories are so popular. The contest winner was going to get 50 bucks and a free subscription. That's not the point, though. The point is, I showed my essay to Curtis, and he raked me over the coals for having all these commas in every sentence. D-man, he says, you've got to get rid of these extra commas. You want your writing to flow. You don't want the reader to keep pausing in the middle of all your sentences. It's distracting, and you're going to start to lose people. Well, he was right. Too many commas is distracting, and you lose the flow. So let's talk about getting rid of all your unneeded commas. And that's why I don't like the definition that the commas represent a pause in your sentence. Yeah, sometimes it does, um, but it's much, much better definition to say it breaks your sentence into meaningful units. Uh, and yeah, so that's the thing too, when you're writing uh, intuitively, you, you might think that a comma goes there, um, but we wanna make sure that we are putting them where they belong. And it, it, per, you know, as he's saying here, it when they're out of place, it'll make your uh, writing sort of seem distracting. Your readers will have to sort of uh, think. Some, I mean, and we know, you know, a, a comma can change the entire idea of a sentence, whether it's there or not. So you have to be very careful about its usage. Uh, and yeah, you know, that's the other thing too. It's just distracting. Um, it, it makes for bad writing and can really upset uh, you know, the idea, uh, you're not going to get your idea across correctly. Okay, one problem with commas is that people use them to separate things that really shouldn't get separated. Like, you don't want anything to separate the subject from the verb. You want the subject and verb to go together. You know, like with this sentence here. The large office building on State Street had several available offices. The comma really interrupts the sentence because it's splitting up the subject and verb. You don't want that. And the same thing is true with verbs and what comes after them, like objects and subject complements that describe what the subject is or was. You know, those things that complete the main idea of the sentence? Take a look. The park downtown was officially opened last week. See, 
You don't want a big pause before explaining what the park was. It interrupts in the middle of the idea. There just shouldn't be a comma. Or look at this one. Franco and Diane drove around the park. Around the park is an important part of the whole idea. You don't need any comma cutting it off from the rest of the sentence. Just like you don't want commas splitting up important ideas in the sentence. You don't want them splitting up prepositional phrases either. You know, huh? those are phrases that start with of or in or by or after. You know, prepositions. Here's what an unneeded comma in a prepositional phrase looks like. Tony bought a newspaper and a coffee on his way to the office. Get that comma out of there. You don't want to break up the prepositional phrase to the office. It's one phrase, so it should all go together smoothly. Do you get the idea? Okay, uh, so, and that's, you'll notice, it, there's an unnatural pause. And that's a good way to recognize these commas when they're out of place. Um, shut the point up here. Dwayne up for a second. Take a look at another look at his example, right? So the park downtown was officially open last week. Um, if it's forcing you to pause, there's a good chance that that comma is not correctly used. Um, even like I said, you know, a lot of times you don't really necessarily pause over a comma, um, but it does sort of change your, your cadence a little bit or, 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 or directing the way that you're, you're understanding the sentence or, or speaking it. Um, but if it's just a sort of abrupt sort of lurch in the sentence, you can see that that's, you know, it just intuitively that that's probably wrong. You know, the park downtown was officially open last week. Not uh, not the correct use of a comma. Frank O and Diane drove around the park again. So, but we know that sometimes those commas feel intuitive to use. We just got to be careful. And our example here, and actually we have a little different setup. We don't have our little boxes. We're just going to click right on the comma that we do not approve of. Um, so. Uh, three of the children in the morning class will write, plan, rehearse, and perform a play. So our incorrect comma is the one right after class, right? Three of the children in the morning class will write. That's the, the complete idea there. And then it's a series after that. So we'll write, plan, rehearse, and perform a play. So we have a series that we're going to bust up with commas correctly, write, plan, rehearse, and perform. Those commas are correct. Three of the children in the morning class, no, we do not put a comma there. And the, the other you know, thing to remember, do we have a whole idea? Three of the children in the morning class, no, if we're putting that comma in there at that location, we do not have a complete idea anywhere in the sentence. Yeah, so it separates the sentence from its verb. Uh, this is the comma that should be removed. I'll go ahead and turn Dwayne back on here. Now, another thing that happens with commas is that people make mistakes with the comma rules. You might know that sometimes you need commas between adjectives, so you accidentally put a comma between adjectives that don't need a comma, like three young apple trees. Remember, if you can't change the order of the adjectives, they don't need a comma. And you wouldn't say young apple three trees so remember these rules. Only put a and remember. the other the other way the rule there right is if you can put and in between them. Three and young apple trees does not work either. So we know that that comma does not belong. Remember, if you can't change and you wouldn't say young. So remember these rules. Only put a comma between adjectives if you could change their order. I just showed you this one. Next. Only put a comma before a fanboy's word. For, and, nor, but, or, 
yet or so if it's joining two independent clauses. Don't put one after the fanboy's word or between two subjects, verbs or adjectives. Like, this would be wrong. The department store manager and the new clerk worked out a schedule. See, there shouldn't be a comma before and if it's joining two subjects or two of anything besides independent clauses. Okay, third, don't put a comma around a restrictive clause. That means a clause that explains or defines what you're talking about, like this. The dog that ran across the road didn't have tags on his collar. This one is definitely wrong because clauses beginning with that are always restrictive. They never get a comma. See, this clause tells the reader what dog you mean, so there shouldn't be any commas around it. And finally... Uh, that that one is a little um, might might get a little confusing because we talked about interruptive phrases, right? Things, information that's set off in commas, uh, you know, intervening phrases, uh, non uh, what was the inessential phrases? I think is the, another way they describe them. You know, the dog didn't have tags on his collar. That's a complete sense. So we could we're, we're thinking, oh well, that's you know, inessential information. It's how it's used and what sets that off. So the word that, if it is saying that, then we need uh, to remove those commas, right? No commas if you are using that. If we constructed that differently, then you would have it set off with a uh, comma. Never get a comma. It's the end of a sentence. The meeting was rescheduled because the client had to go out of town. Remember. Subordinate clauses start with words like because, or until, or while, and when they come at the end of a sentence, they don't need a comma. That's because the subordinate clause word marks the beginning of the new clause already. I know a lot of this is probably review of stuff you already know about commas. If you learned all the rules for using commas really well, then you won't make these kinds of mistakes. You don't need to use commas where, well, where they're not needed. Yeah, and we know, though, right, that's the rule. If the subordinate clause, your subordinate conjunction is in, you know, is, is, is at the end of the sentence. If it becomes, if it's first, we would. So because the client had to go out of town, comma, the meeting was rescheduled. Right. In that case, we would use a comma. If it comes first, comma. If it comes last, no comma. So if you find those words in the middle of a sentence, because, until, while, no comma. If it's at the beginning, you're going to use a comma. Correction would you make to this sentence? Okay, so which correction do we need here? Uh, after the storm, the massive towering oak tree that stood in the front yard had a broken branch. Uh, this one, you know, sometimes these get a little tricky. So we kind of break that down and dissect the sentence after the storm. Okay. We have an introductory phrase there. That's legit. Okay. Uh, the massive towering oak tree. We have adjectives. Can we switch those around? Does it make sense? The towering massive oak tree. Yes, it does. Can we put and in there? The massive and towering oak tree. Absolutely. Looks like that comma works where it is. Uh, that stood in the front yard had a broken branch. Oh, we got that word that. And we have uh, what would appear to be an inessential phrase. But since it's that, we know we need to remove those commas. So the one uh, at the end of tree and the one uh, after yard. So remove the commas after tree and yard great job yep. the clause that stood in the front yard tells you which tree the sentence is talking about it shouldn't have commas because the clause is necessary to explain what tree the writer means it's not extra information yeah that's the difference between you know an essential phrase or clause and uh the inessential it will look like you have a complete idea but it's actually explaining exactly what, you know, 
in this case, you know, a lot of times it'll be like objects or something. Um, so that is different in its use than other words. So if you see that, you know it is in, uh, you don't need commas around it. All right, let's go on to our practice cool. questions. Nice okay, and uh, we'll go to, uh, let's go ahead, we'll take about 10 minutes uh, to go through the um, questions here. Uh, work on your own, and then we'll do some review. So eh, just right before 2.05-ish, we'll say, I'll stop my screen here, stop sharing, pause my video. Fine. Okay, so our first one here, uh, same same rule for, for all these, you know, trying to find the unnecessary comma, uh, <clears throat> locating it. So because the recipe called for summer fruit, Sheila had to make some substitutions apricots, cherries, and chestnuts were not in season, but she could use apples and almonds instead. So already talked about those subordinate clauses of coming at the beginning of, <clears throat> excuse me, of uh, sentence. So because the recipe called for summer fruit, comma, that's correct. Uh, and then that's finished the sentence, right? Sheila had to make some substitutions. That's all one complete sentence. That's the independent clause for that sentence. Apricots, cherries, and chestnuts were in were not in season, but she could use apples and almonds instead. So, looking at that one after chestnut, that looks incorrect, right? Because we have a series to start: apricots, cherries, and chestnuts. So these commas work. Uh, you know, starting a, uh, a sentence with a series, that's fine, no problems there. Uh, we're not in season, comma, but she could use apples and almonds instead. We have a complete sentence there at the end. Yes, she could use apples and almonds instead. That's a standalone sentence, but is the conjunction that comma is correctly used. So this one here, chestnuts, after chestnuts is the incorrect comma. Yeah, putting a comma between the subject and verb, right? Mention that, that's one of the rules there. It should not be one in between your subject and verb. Now, which sentence has an unnecessary comma? Um, so the correct one, or the incorrect one, I guess I should say, is the porch lights and front gate have been without power since the storm. So there's our conjunction again. Is that a complete sentence on either side of that conjunction? No, it is not. The porch lights, not a complete sentence, right? We do not have a subject and a verb. We just have porch lights, uh, part of the subject. So that and is just separating two items that make up the subject, right? If we had a third item, it would be a series and we would actually put commas in between that in a series. Only two objects, we do not. So the porch lights and front gate have been without power since the storm, no comma. Um, when most of the guests have arrived, that is the correct use, right? Introductory phase, phrase, ask everyone to join us in the den. Hector and Louise get off work at four, comma, so they should be here around five. Those are two independent clauses connected with a conjunction. That is correct. We need chairs, beverages, and snacks before the game starts. Separating items in a series, that's correct. This one here, we do need do not need that comma after lights, right? Even though we have that conjunction, it depends on how it's being used. Here, it's just separating two items in the subject. Okay, before dawn, uh, the fishermen will meet at the river, uh, set up their spots and settle in for a long day. The, the contest begins at dawn, the contest ends at seven uh, and there is a fish fry immediately following. So this one is a lot to look at. Got two sentences again, several commas in there. Before dawn, that's correct. Introductory phrase, right? We're separating out when it happened. Uh, the fishermen will meet at the river, comma, set up their spots and settle in for a long day. That's a series, right? It's not just you know, three little items, but we do have 
uh, you know, and I talked about parallelism. So meet at the river, set up their spots, settle in for a long day. Those are all things that the fishermen will do before dawn. Um, that's correct use of commas. The contest begins at dawn, simple sentence there. The contest ends at seven and there is a fish fry immediately following. The contest, again, separating our subject and our verb, that's incorrect. So uh, the comma after contest is incorrect. Uh, this comma here is correct because it's separating two independent clauses. Yeah, between a subject and a verb. That's always the rule. Never a comma between subject and verb. Good job. We will go on. Uh, okay, the rickety rusted boat is made from a combination of aluminum, wood, and duct tape. Okay, the rickety rusted boat. Two adjectives. Can we switch this around? The rusted rickety boat. That makes sense. Can we use and the rickety and rusted boat? Yes, we can. That comma is correct. Rusted boat is, there we go. What are we separating there? All right, so the rusty rusted boat is made from a combination of aluminum one duct tape. That is, that comma there after is, is incorrect. Um, no reason to separate that. Those final uh, two are separating items in a list. So remove the comma after is. There should not be a comma dividing a verb from the object or a complement that comes after it. So same with the subject and verb was coming after the verb. Uh, if it's the if it's the object or the complement afterwards, you do not use a comma. Okay, where's the unnecessary comma here? Fortunately, Albert didn't have to water his garden because it rained all morning. He was able to leave for work early, stop for coffee, and pick up a newspaper. Fortunately, that's separating out our introductory word. That's fine. Uh, Albert didn't have to water his garden because it rained all morning. After garden, that comma, right? We have a subordinate clause. We have a subordinate conjunction. So if it was at the beginning, because it rained all morning, comma, Albert didn't have to water his garden. That would be the correct use of the comma. Here, we do not need it. Those uh, commas in the second sentence are separating out a series, right, of items. So that's correct. Here, though, right, not a comma before a subordinate clause. The plane that landed on runway six taxied over to the hangar area. So we have that word that, right? That landed on runway six. We know if we're using that, we are not using commas. So the plane that landed on runway six taxied over to the hangar area. There should be no commas in this sentence. So we remove the commas after plane and six. If a clause explains which noun you mean, if it's not extra information, then it shouldn't be surrounded by commas. The clause that landed on runway six doesn't need any commas. Okay. Lucas traded some old video games in exchange for a pair of hiking boots. In addition, Lucas also traded for a tent fishing pole and tackle box. Uh, our incorrect comma is after in, right? Lucas traded some old video games in exchange for a pair of hiking boots. That is incorrect. Oh, I didn't answer. There we go. Yeah, so the first comma in the sentence comes in the middle of a prepositional phrase, right? Why? Why are you putting a comma there? There's no reason for it. Uh, commas shouldn't interrupt prepositional phrases, right? <clears throat> Our final one. Uh, the man riding the green motorcycle ran the stop sign. After the intersection, he turned left into a gas station. 
So after motorcycle, right? The man riding the green motorcycle, that is our subject, ran the stop sign. Ran is our verb. Do not separate our subject and verb with a comma. So we're going to remove the one after motorcycle. After the intersection, right? That's an introductory phrase. It's telling you when it happened uh, or the location, I guess I should say. That is correct. By subject. Yeah. All right. So. So that's my lesson on commas. I guess the point is, if you don't need a comma, then don't use one. Too many commas make your writing choppy and break up the flow of your ideas. And good writing needs flow, dude. Stick to putting commas where you need them, like between items in a series or after an introductory word or phrase. Don't put them where they'll break up the subject, verb, and object of a sentence. It's really not too hard once you get used to it. Click on results to see how you did on the questions. Okay, so well, we don't need to do that. Um, but, so, it will become more intuitive as you go along. Um, and largely, if you're proofreading, right, if you're going back and editing is where you may catch commas in your own writing that are not necessary. So, uh, you know, whatever formal writing you're doing, you should always reserve some time to edit. Um, so, you know, since you're sending a cover letter, if you're sending a professional email or something like that, always make sure that you reread it uh, and you'll catch a lot of times mistakes like that, you know, when it comes to grammar and punctuation. Um, and just, you know, that simple rule of thumb, you know, a comma separates your uh, sentence into meaningful units. If there's something that is if it's separating something that doesn't need separated, particularly with subject and verb, uh, or in the middle of a prepositional phrase, um, then you'll know to remove it. And also it just will seem awkward. If it, all of a sudden there's an awkward pause in your sentence, you might wanna review that sentence and see uh, if that comma is in its correct place. Uh, so yeah, we'll be moving on past commas finally. Uh, seems like we've been spending a lot of time on those. Um, any questions on where, when, how to use a comma? Okay, um, so one last thing before I let you guys go. Um, actually, I'm just gonna 